more than a billion dollars worth of weapons and supplies for the fight. What could have taken months of bureaucratic approvals, political maneuvering, and logistical coordination happened in a matter of days. So why did so many countries race to arm Ukraine? What did they send? And what is it all worth? Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th. Within 24 hours, Lithuania, Poland, France, Estonia, and the United States all announced military aid for Ukraine. Biden approved $350 million in military aid. That became the largest single transfer of arms from U.S. warehouses to another country ever. It was the start of a flood of military supplies sent to Ukraine in just the first week of war, as protests around the world called for an end to the invasion. Stop Russian aggression! And the internet erupted over claims that the U.S. offered a different kind of help to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, the chance to be evacuated. Zelensky reportedly answered, I need ammunition, not a ride. On February 26th, 10 more countries announced they would send aid, including Stinger missiles, helmets, machine guns, and fuel. Many shipments broke countries' long-standing traditions of not sending weapons to active war zones. Berlin reversed course to send 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 surface-to-air missiles. On February 27th, six more countries announced millions worth of military shipments, including 5,000 anti-tank weapons. By the fifth day, a Russian military convoy was headed directly towards Kyiv. For the first time in its history, the European Union financed and purchased weapons for a country outside its borders, to the tune of $505 million. And U.S. sent our newer weapons, like Javelin and Stinger missiles. But much of the military equipment shipped by European countries is older weapons from the Soviet era. When Germany said, we're going to deliver a couple of thousand air defense missiles, those were things which they had inherited from the, from the GDR. So these are things which are 30 years old, or more. It's something of a benefit, since Ukrainian troops were largely trained on Soviet-era weapons. At the end of the first week, Russian forces had seized a city in the south, but Ukrainians were holding on to the capital. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of, wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. In the months leading up to the current conflict, the United States sent military equipment in anticipation of prolonged street fighting. Three weeks after Russia's invasion, the U.S. promised Ukraine another $1 billion in weapons and supplies. The U.S. also announced $6.5 billion in military spending on the crisis, which includes sending more troops to Europe. There were already 9,000 U.S. troops stationed on the Polish side of the border, and other NATO members have doubled up on troops in Eastern Europe. 